Surprise. <laughs> okay, so y'all have a surprise this morning because no, I'm not Matthew. We all know that. Um, and I had a surprise last night at 822 when Matthew called to tell me he was sick. So I'm really sad that Matthew's sick, um, but um, I am standing in for him. Uh, I'm pleased to offer the sermon that he prepared. Uh, I have modified it a little bit to make it a little more deliverable for me, but the message is Matthew's, and so um, we are proceeding. I will say, let's say a word of prayer for the Ruffner family. The illness has passed through their home, just about through all of them. So um, we pray for Matthew and for the children, especially as they recover. Today we continue our sermon series, Listening for the Heartbeat of God, and this week we are especially focused on listening for God's heartbeat in all things, in all things. And we're turning our attention to the 46th Psalm. So I invite you now to listen that by faith you may receive God's word for you this morning. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, a holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes the wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatter, shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew writes this. If I had a dollar for every time I was told to just sit still in my life, Let's just say I'd be able to solve a lot of the HVAC problems here at the church and far beyond. <laughs> he says, I've always had trouble sitting still, staying in my seat in school, walking slowly through any hallway, staying on one task for more than 15 minutes, or, talking, or taking in long lectures. If you are thinking, sounds like those are classic symptoms of a person with ADD, you are spot on. Although it wasn't until his Sunday school teacher, Ms. Beckham, also became his ninth grade science teacher that he came to understand what ADD is. And then he found joy in the tools that he discovered that could support him. Matthew says, I should pause here and say that for much of my life, my ADD was something I felt ashamed of due to the stigma around those with ADD. But I've come to learn that it's a superpower when it comes to being a pastor who has to shift gears over a hundred times a day or who preaches in two different locations on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Preach, preach, preach. Psalm 46 speaks right to my ADD, he says. It is a busy and noisy psalm. Things change. Mountains move. Nations war. And in the midst of all the noise and the upheaval, God is present. God is not only present, God is in the very center of the noise and upheaval. In the middle of the city, in the middle of the noise, the tremors, the roars. To quote Martin Luther, a mighty fortress is our God. Ironic, 
ironically, a hymn some called the battle hymn of the Reformation. Ironic given that the God we know in Psalm 46 wants nothing more than for wars to cease. Nonetheless, the image of God as a mighty fortress is to portray that God is grounded. God is solid and present amidst all the world. Amidst all the things that the world may send God's way. Which is a comfort. But it is also meant as an invitation to us. Even for those for whom sitting is no problem, hearing be still in the midst of the chaos of our lives and the shifting family dynamics, work expectations, parenting demands, both for our children and then becoming parents for our own parents. Well, any of that can make us feel like running away. Not to mention the roaring and foaming of waters of war, the displacement of people from their homelands, or the mental health crises that seem to dot the landscape all around us. Be still. He says, I don't know about you, but in the face of such demand, such suffering, such pain and uncertainty... I want to flee to happier and more hopeful ground rather than be still in the midst of all of that chaos and upheaval. To be clear, in our spiritual tradition, the invitation to be still is quite different than sitting still. Being still is the invitation to be present to stay grounded in the moment, awake to the presence of God that is with you in the midst of the changing landscape and chaos. It's choosing to stay when everything within us wants to flee the discomfort, the pain, the fear. To stay present when all we want to do is eject and scroll social media, to to stay open when all we want to do is numb ourselves. Staying present takes discipline and commitment. It allows us to reach new depths of life and faith. Michael Jordan's biographer wrote that what made Michael Jordan the greatest basketball player of all time It was not his ability to run fast. It wasn't his ability to jump high or because he had the best shot. What made Michael Jordan great was his ability to stay present in every moment. To never be anywhere else but where he was right then. His biographer called him a mystic. Mystic is the term we have in the religious tradition for those persons who are grounded and in tune with the presence of God no matter the circumstance. Mystic. The Celts understood this orientation as a way of life. They sought to be attuned to the presence of God, not to fulfill a religious term. As the German mystic Mechtid of Magdeburg said, the day of my spiritual awakening was the day I saw and knew I saw all things in God and God in all things. I'll repeat that. The day of my spiritual awakening was the day I saw and knew I saw All things in God, and God in all things. To run away from the chaos would be to miss out on the full expression of our humanity and also the vastness of God. Barbara Brown Taylor says, Whoever you are, you are human. Wherever you are, you live in the world which is just waiting for you to notice 
the holiness in it. What is saving my life now, Barbara says, is the conviction that there is no spiritual treasure to be found apart from the bodily experience of human life on earth. Psalm 46 invites us not to flee the difficult places in our lives and our world, for that is the very dwelling place of God. Indeed, discover the spiritual treasure found in the bodily experiences of human life. For when we choose to flee, we flee from the one we are in search of. God is with us. So the invitation is to be still and come to know the depth of God where we are. Friends, resist the urge to flee. Remember these words from one of our confessions. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.